It is the most incredible racetrack in the world. 2.6 miles of sheer speed. Bank 33 degrees in the turns. It's the Alabama International Motor Speedway here at Talladega. The most competitive track ever constructed. Hello, I'm Ken Squire. Directly behind me, 41 Grand National Stock Cars ready to compete in the ninth annual $252,000 Classic. The chief adversary today, perhaps not the other drivers, but the stiff breeze that will whip these cars from one lane to another in turn two. If the wind uh, keeps blowing like it's blowing now, it'll be uh, worse coming off a of turn two. It uh, makes you push into the wall uh, real bad coming off a of turn two, and then going into three, it makes the car, if you try to run high, it makes the car uh, just want to go straight on and, and not make the turn. This was the seat inside Darrell Waltrip's winning car on its way to victory lane a year ago. A favorite here today, but not alone in that category, according to the fans. Uh, not sure, but I'm pulling for Richard. Um, Bobby Allison will win today. Dave Marcus. Donnie Allison, of course. It's six or eight cars to win a race. I, I'd say Floyd or uh, Pearson or the Allison brothers or Kale or... Benny Parson, Walter, play six or eight cars from Winters Race up there. This court who has a good look. A driver has to be good and lucky to win at Talladega. Darrell Walship, do you feel lucky today? No, but I feel good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd rather be lucky than good here anytime. It's really hard to say. I hadn't felt lucky in a long time. I, I don't even know how, how it would feel to be lucky. Right now, we're really not running that good, but we're not really running that bad, so... Uh, if we've got the lucky break, we have got a chance to win. The pace car moving down pit road, and today we have our camera mounted inside the Louisiana driver Skip Manning's car in the front of the field. He was fourth place finisher just a year back in the August Talladega 500, and he tells us what you'll be seeing right over his shoulder in his Buick car number 92. And you've got a got to put yourself in the mood that you're in a race car and you're going to be running literally inches off several other cars at a time. And uh, I think it'll be very exciting. This racetrack here excites me. It's got to excite the people. As the field shuffles into position, the front row here today, Cale Yarbrough at 191 miles an hour for the pole. A.J. Boyd is flanked beside it. Second row, car five and our camera car number 92. Neil Bonnet driving number five and Skip Manning beside it. Row three, another Harry Hyde car, and beside it, Junior Don Levy's number 90. Farrell Harris on the inside, Porterville, California's Richard Brooks outside. Row four, Herb Nabs 54 inside, the J.C. Elder number 72 outside. It's Lenny Pond of the 54, and the former national champion, Benny Parsons, beside it. Row five, the Dewey Levin Good Wrench car number two, and the famous car number 43 outside. It's Dave Marcus on the inside, and in car 43, Richard Petty. Here's A.J. Foyt with a problem pulling on pit road. Reviewing the field further back, Hoss Ellington's car number one, Donnie Allison's control, starts 17th, flanking him. Last year's runner-up, the buddy parent car for Darrell Waltrip, worried about this year's start. There's some people in front of me that are, uh, I'm maybe not one to talk, but they're lesser experienced than I am. And lesser experienced drivers, no matter how good they are, sometimes cause problems. Other drivers will have problems today. Bobby Allison will start 12th. Boyd rejoining the field, starting 41st today. Skip Manning has moved up into the front row alongside Kelly Arborough. Buddy Baker is starting way back in 22nd. There's the 51 of Boyd. At the end of the field, as the green flag is unfurled, and the Alabama 500 is underway. Skip Manning is in front. Manning with our camera on board on a turn two in the lead, number 92. Number 90, Richard Brooks is pulling up aside Skip Manning, and there you see him going by from inside Manning's car, and here comes Benny Parsons in car 72. Parsons sideways with him in turn number three at 190 miles per hour, shaking those cars into turn four. Manning drops to six. Here comes 72 Parsons around number 90. Richard Brooks to take the lead. Three lead changes here in the first lap as they complete lap one. Parsons in first, Yarborough is second. Here's Bobby Allison rip-riding around Skip Manning at 190 miles per hour. And here comes Waltrip from 18th position. He's going into 8th, getting by Skip Manning up here in turns 1 and 2. And there comes Buddy Baker. Baker from 22nd position in the night in just about a lap and a half. Parsons in first. Kaylee Opera with second. Lenny Pond is in third. Complete lap number two. Through this very difficult, treacherous trioval, Kaylee Arborough inside goes for the lead. Baker is pulled up into the fifth position. 
Bobby Allison now third, running fourth is Lenny Pond. Here they come, down that 4,000-foot long back straightaway. Whoa, an engine blows in the center of the field. One car hand grenading an engine in Coop Kumar of Columbia, Tennessee. Looking like a defective rocket as car number 14 goes up in smoke. That'll bring out the first caution of the afternoon as Cuckoo Marlin loses the engine on the Chevrolet. And the 1978 Alabama 500, Cuckoo Marlin's car 14 looking still hungry after devouring its own engine out here. We're back under green with Kaylee Yarborough first, Betty Parsons second, Darrell Waltrip third, and Donnie Allison's car number one running fourth. Darrell Waldrip in the 88 on these 33 degree high banks, five stories high, battling out of turn two to pick up a position. Waldrip challenging for first place. Six cars less than one second apart, and they're covering 300 feet a second. Donnie Allison has appropriated second position. And here's Allison putting the charge on. Walton locked him off with a try over. Going you back to these drivers, you're appearing over the shoulder of Skip Manning at 190 miles per hour, running in ninth position, going up into turn three. And look at the pounding he's taking out here. It looks so smooth from outside, but from inside these cars, it's a bruising way to spend an afternoon. Dave Marcus is putting the challenge on him, and there goes Marcus into ninth position. Earlier, Darrell Waltrip told us about the beating a driver takes out here. The car is moving so fast, and, and there's a lot of movement in the race car. You're going to see this, and uh, your vision is actually blurred. Uh, you can't distinctly see that much in front of you. It's a lot of it's instinct, a lot of it's feeling, a lot of it's being there before and knowing what's happening. Uh, it, it's why wrecks are hassle or caused sometimes, because a guy realizes I can't see much further than the fender of my car, you know, and he drives head on into somebody. Remember 1975 here at Talladega, up in turn two? This is what a driver faced as he came out of that turn. I saw bumpers, tires, wheels, windshields, chrome, dust. It was most I've never seen anything like it. It, just, it was devastating. Cars were everywhere, and you just you stopped almost to thread your way through the jump. That's what it's like when something goes wrong in front of one of these cars at 190 miles per hour at the world's fastest motor speedway. Right now, Donnie Allison in a draft of Darrell Waltrip is moving back around Bobby Allison for the lead. Talladega 500 with assistance of Waltrip himself last year at the end of the race is out in front. 17 degree try over. Third is Donnie's elder brother Bobby Allison. Fourth is Cale Yarborough, fifth Benny Parsons. Five cars still within one second of each other. Driving style is the puzzle between these competitors, and here we're watching Waltrip ducking under Donnie Allison from the back straightaway. The stiff breezes today are perhaps the biggest riddle. Earlier, Kelly Arboro, now pulling the third position, talked about the wind here at Talladega. Uh, I look at the flags when I come down the front stretch uh, and to see if the wind is uh, still blowing the same direction it was the lap before, because sometimes it will change. The enigma of the unseen, represented only by these flags flying swiftly in the breeze, a problem for these race cars. Buddy Baker told us more. Uh, it's very similar to driving a speedboat or an airplane or anything else. You have to, to know the wake, and the air becomes a wake when you get to a certain speed. It, it can be just like a rudder uh, as far as how it makes the car go. But if you ever throw it sideways there, you're in more trouble than you can get out of. And to verify the testimony of Buddy Baker, watch what happened in 1976 when a car got sideways. That's Richard Rook, Porterville, California, sliding 8, 900 feet, and it sets off a chain reaction. Benny Parsons, out of control, and right in his door, David Pearson. Three $65,000 cars in dire straits, because 
one got just a little sideways. Back to the race here in the 1978 Alabama 500. Donnie Allison first, Darrell Waltrip is in second, Cale Yarbrough third, and Richard Petty, who hasn't won a race in 24, almost a year since Petty was last in victory lane at Daytona Beach, is up in the fourth position. Look at this battle for the lead. Waltrip on the high side, downstairs Donnie Allison in the number one, and they go three deep. Cale Yarbrough charges to the inside group. Richard Petty pulls underneath Everyone. He's beneath Kelly Arborough, and Petty goes out in front. The dog John Mobile that's been in trouble all season long now leads here at Talladega, Alabama. Coming down to complete this lap, Petty is first. No, he's dropping back. Kale Yarborough retakes the lead. Donnie Allison goes to second. And in one lap, Richard Petty has moved from fifth to first and fallen back to third in just one lap here at this amazing track. David Pearson out of the race. Three times the winner of this Alabama 500, but it's all over for the Silver Fox from Spartanburg, South Carolina this afternoon. A quartet of contenders striving for the lead, and the lead belongs to anyone who dares to go for it. stays right up against the concrete barrier on the very high side of the 33 degree banking. Caution is out once again after this calamity for Blackie Wengren's automobile which finally falls to the bottom of the racetrack. Caution and this will mean pit stops. The entire front of the field moving on to pit road. And the action here is rough and tough as much as it is on the track at the Alabama International Motor Speedway. Garborough pitting car number 11. On Bellina of France in. Here's Richard Petty pulling in. Sort of looks like feeding time at the zoo. There's Junior Johnson. And he literally sweeps one of the NASCAR officials right off his feet as he came around to make a four tire change. The last American hero upsetting one of the officials. And here is a, a more conservative use of the jack, but one of the Richard Petty men is they're going in for a four-tire change. And this is the only respite these drivers get in these 500-mile drives. 18 to 22 seconds on pit road while these pit crews do their thing and do it so well. Alabama International Motor Speedway, the $252,000 1978 Alabama 500 thunders toward conclusion. I'm Ken Squire with the action already out. Ron Hutcherson, Benny Parsons, David Pearson, Bobby Allison, Neil Bonnet, and Chuck Down among the leaders who've fallen by the wayside. And right now, number 27, Buddy Baker, who has not won a race since he won this Alabama 500 in 1976 at a record-breaking speed that year of 169 miles an hour, is out in front. You see Donnie Allison in second. Darrell Waltrip is running third. And the interval first to third about one second. Donnie Allison challenging, taking first position. Waltrip pulls down for the lead. In turn three, back on the 33 degree banking, it is Darrell Waltrip out in front. Kaylee Yarborough into second place. cars, bumper to bumper, back to Richard Petty's number 43, fighting for the lead in the waiting moments of the race. Let's take a look inside our camera car once again, the Skip Manning number 92 running back in ninth position. Looks so smooth out here now, but it's so rough out there. Earlier, we asked him if the last 100 miles was more difficult than the first part of the race. Yeah, it really is. It requires so much concentration because usually it's a super competitive race. There's people running in a bunch and they're running so quick, so close together that you honestly just can't make a mistake. And we're all human, so uh, it's really difficult to keep your mind glued on what you're doing for three or four hours. Here's Donnie Allison's car number one slowing down out of turn number two. Donnie Allison 
dropping off the pace. Four cars now in the lead lap and in contention to win this Alabama 500. Waltrip first, Cale Yarbrough second, Petty third, Buddy Baker in fourth. And here's Donnie Allison back in the pits. Out of the race. There were five, and now there are now there are three. Waldrop has dropped off the pace. Petty is in front. Baker and Yarborough are running side by side. Darrell Waldrop, 88, is out the lead draft, and Richard Petty is in the lead. Still side by side. Buddy Baker's blue and white, number 27 on the inside. Cale Yarborough wheel to wheel with it. Through the trioval, Richard Petty seems to be drawing away. 24 straight races without a win for Petty. Whenever he's won 185, will he make it 186 today? Hobbling into the pits, Darrell Waltrip. Car number 88, they go to work inside the automobile immediately. There's Buddy Parrott, the crew chief. And Darrell Waltrip is thwarted in his effort for a second straight Alabama 500 win. His third straight of 78, if he could pull it off today. A sad and tired Waltrip taking the longest walk truly in sports away from his car and a potential win to the oblivion of the infield. Trouble on the back straightaway. It is Lenny Pond of Hedrick, Virginia, spinning out of turn number two. Pond tagging the inside wall with the back of the automobile. It's still running, but it brings out a caution flag. The safety car moving back on the world's fastest motor speedway here in Talladega, Alabama. Lenny Pond continuing around the track with a back end sadly crunched. Here's Cale Yarborough in to top the tank for a final time. Buddy Baker, a major adversary, pulling in behind Yarborough. As they put left side tires on his car, here's Richard Petty's number 43, and, and there's something amiss. They're going underneath the automobile. It's more than tires here on Petty's car. Cale Yarborough with a quick tire change. They're putting him back on the track. He comes out first. Baker will come out second, and there are problems on Richard Petty's number 43. The field into the back straightaway. They're getting set for a start, and Petty will be off the pace. And A.J. Foyt, a lap down, leading Cale Yarborough, who is in the first position. Field coming down for a start. Richard Petty just down off the jacks. Here's the field out of turn number four. And as they break back to the line, it is Cale Yarborough in the lead. Buddy Baker is in second. Foyt, remember, the red automobile is one lap down, running in third. Petty's automobile is finally underway, but he's out of the hunt. Baker dramatically making up ground on Cale Yarborough with the assistance now of A.J. Foyt, grasping beneath Cale Yarborough with a two-and-a-half lap distance to go. In turn four, Buddy Baker is your leader, and he slingshots out in front of Cale Yarborough, running three deep with a lap car and A.J. Foyt by about four car lengths, but look at Yarborough move back in. Cale Yarborough back to the inside. Wheel to wheel for the trioval. Yarborough is again the leader. With two laps to go, Cale Yarborough first, Buddy Baker in second. The Junior Johnson crew, this is the David F. crew of Buddy Baker. Back stretch. Baker going for the inside. White flag when they come around this time. Baker back in front. Back to the tri-oval. The starter about to put out the one-lap indicator on the field. And it comes down to a two-car shootout between Buddy Baker, 1976 winner of this event, hasn't won since, and Cale Yarborough looking for his 51st victory today seeking his first win at the Alabama International Motor Speedway in the back straightaway. Last time around, speed at over 190 miles per hour. A.J. Boyd's red car is in third, a lap down. Skip Manning has appropriated fourth with that high attrition rate at the end of the race. And Manning is trying for third on the inside. Here they are in turn three, headed for four. Baker in front, in second, that white car. That is Kelly Arborough, and he runs to the inside. Side by side, A.J. Boyd comes high. It is Cale Yarborough breaking his run. Yarborough pulling away by eight car lengths. Cale Yarborough will win the Alabama 500. Buddy Baker in second. A.J. Boyd finishing in third, handing in fourth. A sad time for David Ips' Buddy Baker crew. And what a glorious...
glorious moment for the junior Johnson crew of car number 11, driven to victory by Kale Yarbrough here today. In three hours, seven minutes, and 53 seconds, averaging 159 miles per hour. Yarborough wins his first Alabama 500. There were 44 lead changes among eight drivers officially, and that doesn't count the numerous times they swapped the lead around in the back straightaway. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Kale Yarborough, a nifty move on that last lap. Well, Ned, you know, I just want to thank the good Lord for a good, safe race today, but the car ran real good all day, and I just, uh, you know, tried to play it cool. I knew if I'd keep my cool and wait to the last lap that, that I thought I could beat him, so I did. I, I wanted to try him down the back stretch, but I, I knew better, so uh, I just waited to the last lap. And so when you finally made your move, did you feel it was too early or maybe too late? I felt it was just the right time, then. And indeed it was for Kaylee Yarbrough to win $34,300 of the $252,000 purse in the ninth annual Alabama 500.